Good morning and welcome to New Life Online. I hope you're getting excited about Christmas. It's getting close now and kids, if you're watching, I pray that you have an amazing Christmas. I hope you've been good this year. We're going to join in our service this morning. We're going to begin by singing a song of worship. You know, I love this time of year when carols are played all across our nation. These songs of worship declaring amazing things about who Jesus was and why he came. And we're going to join to begin with in our first carol. But before that, let's pray. Father, I thank you that we can join together like this. We thank you, Lord, that through a, a time which we've been describing in our Christmas program as a time when the world is weary, Lord, we thank you that we can look to the light and the hope of the world and celebrate your birth at this time of year. Lord, we pray that today as we join, Lord, that you will let hope begin to rise again in our hearts, Lord. Help us to believe again for the future, Lord, and trust you for greater days ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning we're going to look at Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Shift this across a bit. I'm going to read the first seven verses of Galatians 4, which says this. Think of it this way. If a father dies and leaves an inheritance for his young children, those children are not much better off than slaves until they grow up, even though they actually own everything their father had. 
They have to obey their guardians until they reach whatever age their father set. And that's the way it was with us before Christ came. We were like children. We were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of this world. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. Amen. It's, I want to say this morning, it's still time for a weary world to rejoice. It's still time. You know, I'm sure that this week, this week's been strange in many ways because I, I was uh, talking with a couple of people just before the service this morning and, you know, we're just saying like this week and, and how things have kind of gone, maybe a month ago we weren't expecting things to, the, the feeling of the, the nation to be like what it is right now. But I just want to remind us today that God is still on the throne Emmanuel is still with us, that we have a hope and a future in him, and Jesus is still the King of Kings. So therefore, we this morning, as a church and as the people of God, we, as a weary world, we can still rejoice today. In the first week when we looked at this, our Christmas theme, we looked at different reasons why we can rejoice. And then last week, we looked at how we need to rejoice because his coming was good news for all people for all time, which means that his coming is still good news for us today. We can still rejoice this morning. But this morning, I want us to take that theme a little further, and I want to say, a weary world rejoices because he was and is worth the wait. I don't know if you remember, some of you here will still be in this situation, but uh, as a kid, when Christmas was coming, I remember being so excited in the lead up to Christmas. I could not wait. I, my sleep patterns were drastically affected, in the, particularly the night before, Christmas Eve. And uh, I, even as an adult, there have been times where I've been excited about the next day because of uh, enjoying, wanting to see the kids and their enjoyment and all that sort of stuff. And, and I remember a time, and I'm not exaggerating, it was about eight years ago, where I stayed up the whole night on Christmas Eve because I could not get to sleep because I was so excited about the next day. And, uh, you know, I know people have different experiences, but for me, Christmas Eve is the best day of the year. Christmas Eve is the best day of the year. Even better than Christmas Day. Because, I, don't get me wrong, I love Christmas Day, but I love the build-up to Christmas even more. I love, uh, you know, I'm going to go south and hopefully we'll be able to go to a Christmas Eve service at my, my mum and dad's church. It's got something about that that's, uh, uh, that's been a kind of tradition in our, in our household. And, and, you know, we go there and you, you sing the songs and we go back to my mom's and, you know, we have something to, to eat and things like that before, uh, before we get to bed and wrap up and all the stuff that kind of comes along with that. But I love the build up to it. And I don't know if you can remember a time, maybe it's Christmas or maybe you know, there's other times of year which are better for you. Or there's other days that you can remember when you've been waiting for something to happen. I remember an advert on TV before with kids that were excited about going to Disneyland or something like that. And there was a sense of, of anticipation and excitement that was within them. You know, sometimes teachers who are here, I wonder if you've been waiting with anticipation for that final bell to go on, uh, is it Wednesday when you finish up? Tuesday, sorry for getting that wrong. Tuesday, waiting until Tuesday when that final bell goes. I wonder if this week and the, the, the last week leading up to Christmas has felt like the longest time, as I said, everybody kind of trying to avoid being pinged. I read something this week to say avoiding COVID in the 10 days leading up to Christmas is like the world's worst adrenaline sport. There's a lot of truth to that. And there's something about expectation that is exciting when we're waiting on something to happen. But there's also times where expectation can be really rubbish. You know, there's times where expectation and waiting on some news and things like that can be really, really hard. You know, from the minimal types of stuff that maybe you're waiting on a Christmas present to arrive through the mail and it's not arrived in time and it's Christmas Eve. I'm just making up a scenario. And that's not great, but especially for the person who's meant to get the present. But maybe there's other times where it's even more about the challenge of waiting. 
Maybe you've been at the hospital and you have to wait two to three weeks until you hear back on your test results. Or maybe there's other things where you're waiting on news of, of, of different things. You see, waiting can be hard. Waiting can be full of anxiety at times and can even sometimes be painful. But this morning I felt to bring a word of encouragement that the arrival of Jesus was worth the wait. And God's timing is perfect and worth rejoicing about today. You see, one thing I've learned about in life is that God seems to be comfortable with our waiting. He seems to be comfortable with us waiting. You see, there's a lot of waiting goes on in life. From conception to birth, there's a, there's a waiting time. As, as British people, we queue. Now, I remember going to Albania once on mission. And we went with a guy who owned the, 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 the mission organization. It was Tiff and I. We were, we were still at university, and we were going out to help with kids' camps for the summer. And, uh, and we were on the plane, and we, we were naive. We'd very rarely traveled ever in our lives. But thankfully, the guy who was the kind of head of the mission was going that day. And we arrived in Hungary, and we had to change planes. And he said to us as we were getting up off the plane, he says, when the doors open, run. And we're like, okay. And so we ran, and everybody just, there was no queuing. In, in, in that part of the world. It seems to be a very British thing. In fact, I don't know if you do this, but sometimes I do this when I'm in Tesco's. This is me confessing my sins before people here today, right? But I stand in the queue and I look for the shortest one and I'm waiting and I was like, you see somebody who's like, say you're second in the queue, right? You spot somebody else who's second in the queue and you want to beat that person, right? Any, maybe just me, right? I got told this week, even in a school report card, a teacher wrote about my competitiveness in a school report card. Could you believe that, right? So even in Tesco's, even in Tesco's, I'm standing in the queue, and I see it as a personal insult if that person wins rather than me. Or sometimes, like, and, and if the person in front of me has an issue with their card, or if they need, because they've got something that's burst, and they need to send somebody else to get it, oh, devastation. Because you know that is going to hold you up. You might be on the losing end. But there's something in us that doesn't like waiting. We don't like that idea of growing patience in our life. And, and, and sometimes that idea of waiting is a challenge because we live in a very instant society. You know, my, when your computer is slow, and you think on slow, speed is very relative compared to what it was maybe 15 years ago. I remember when we used to have dial-up internet. I remember when you had to, you, you had to, you know, hit the dial-up thing, and you would hear that modem sound. Does any of you remember that sound that was like you could have a fax machine? Bob remembers it, and you would hear that sound, and and you'd be trying to get on, and eventually it would load up, and then the page with just text would load up, and then in my house somebody would get on the phone and cut you off, and you would have no chance of of looking at the at the page. Whereas nowadays, if we don't have video instantly in 4K in front of us within the, you know, the click of a button, we're fed up with it because we think our computers are slow. Maybe there's times where literally the, the speed of our lives that we live these days, maybe there's something about that that's not good for the way we live our life. Maybe life was not built for such breakneck speeds. You see, certain things are better when they take time. A slow-cooked roast is better than a fast-food burger. There's something about the amount of time that something takes. And in life and in church leadership, we can be guilty of this as well. You know, we want to see things happen instantly. We want to see the power of God come through right now. We want to see revival happen right now. But even through Scripture, we see different times where there's those who have experienced, you know, the vision and the, the dream from God, and it takes decades to come to pass. Decades before the reality comes. Sometimes there are things in the Bible that take centuries to happen. God is comfortable about allowing us to wait. But there's something powerful about waiting. On Monday night at our prayer time, we sat in silence for two minutes. And two minutes can seem like a long time these days when you're sitting in silence in a meeting. And we just prayed that the Lord would speak to us. And you know what? Almost every person on that prayer time had something that they felt the Lord impress on their heart in that moment. When you just take a couple of minutes just out of the day and just say, Lord, what are you saying to me today? 
You know, we, we live life, as I said, at breakneck speed, but the idea of waiting and the importance of timing is so important. And the Christmas story actually has lots of waiting involved. In fact, the, the time when Jesus arrived is thousands of years after the, the, the Bible was the, the, the creation story. But you could even look at Genesis chapter 3. And, and in Genesis 3, we read about how the, the, from the seed of the woman will come somebody who will crush the serpent's head. You get, there's, there's, there's certainly some messianic context around that, over the top of that. So even at the start of Scripture, it was prophesied that Jesus would come and defeat the enemy. But it was thousands of years before that came to pass. Jews were waiting, and some are still waiting on their Messiah, who we believe is Jesus. But there is a sense of waiting. And if you move into the New Testament, you know, we watch a nativity story take place in 10, 15, 20 minutes that it happens in front of us, and we see all the events take place. But even the Christmas story could have taken place over a longer period of time. We read at the beginning of Elizabeth, who is pregnant, and then we hear of her in her sixth month, and Mary comes to visit her. And Mary stays with her for three months. And, and these months are, are gathered in a few words. I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes I take a think, and I like, I wonder what Mary and Elizabeth spoke about for those three months. You know, we can't fill in the gaps of that there, because the Bible doesn't tell us. But I wonder what they spoke about. What about Joseph when he has to deal with the fact that Mary is pregnant and, and, you know, it's a miraculous conception. I wonder what things he had to wrestle with and times that he had to go through in this period of waiting before Jesus was born. But Christmas happened at the exact right time. It happened in God's timing. And Christmas changes things for all time, but what we realize as we look through Scripture is that God's timing is perfect. And as I said, I want to remind us this morning that a weary world can rejoice because he's worth the wait. That passage that I read is maybe a different passage that we read on the Sunday before Christmas. Very often we'll read from the first couple of chapters of, of, of Luke or or from the beginning of Matthew as well, or we'll read about the prophecies and the coming of Jesus, but, but there's been something stirring in my heart that I believe is a word for the Lord for us for today, that this whole season of Advent and this time of, of the lead up to Christmas literally means coming or arrival. I find this whole concept quite more, well, more real than this year than maybe I have ever before. A lot of my prayer times, for those who do the Lectio 365 devotions, there's just been this little prayer that uh, talks about the, one of the earliest prayers, this old word, Maranatha, which means come Lord Jesus. And there's been something of that that's just been quite real to me just now. But, uh, but there's an idea here of the coming of, of the Lord. In this passage in Galatians 4, although the overriding theme is about being adopted into God's family, there's also a reminder that Jesus was born at the exact time. In fact, some of the translation says, in the fullness of time. The translation I read says, at just the right time, Jesus came. And it's always important to remember when we celebrate Christmas, not just when Jesus came, but why he came. And this passage in Galatians 4 reminds us that Jesus came, and, and he tells us because of that, that we are safe. Because in Jesus and through him, we are safe from the judgment of God because he came. And that's what the passage reminds us. It reminds us that we are known and loved. We're not only saved by God at the cross and from God, from his wrath, but we are saved to God. And it reminds us that we are part of his family. It means that we enjoy a father-child relationship with him and tells us that we can even call him Abba, Father, which, which is a, a, a very intimate term, which literally means dad. It's, it's that sort of way. Be reminded that because of him, we, have, we are safe, we're known and loved, and we are wealthy beyond our imagination. You know, many people right now, you might think that I've no cash left. It's the week leading up to Christmas, and my money's been spent on presents. But I want to remind you today that that passage tells us that we are wealthier than Jeff Bozos. I think that's how you say Bezos. I better not call him a Bozo. That's not right. Because your father wants to share with you that actually we get to share in his inheritance. I was reading recently about Daniel Craig, the, the James Bond who's just done his last James Bond movie. And he said that his kids are going to earn no inheritance from him. I mean, a very rich actor, 
but he's decided that he wants his kids to, to earn what they can of their own. And so he's not going to pass on uh, his, his, I suppose, great wealth to them for this time uh, when, when, they, when he goes. And I kind of understand in some ways I've heard of other people do that. But in other ways, it's not like God because in this passage, we reminded that he gives us what we don't deserve. That in him, we have an inheritance. You see, we have true, lasting prosperity, otherworldly prosperity, a divine inheritance kept in heaven so that we are no longer a slave, but a son and a son with an heir through God. So it's no mistake that when Paul compares sons with slaves, he calls the son the owner of everything. He speaks about sons in general, but he means for us to see something about what it means to be God's son. All that he has, and he has it all, he wants to share with his redeemed and adopted children. You're rich beyond imagination. So we can praise God this morning why Jesus came but today I want to remind us that we can praise God for when he came, because he was worth the wait. Today, if you're in Christ, despite all we have, and despite, you know, sometimes life can keep us waiting. You might be waiting this morning for an answer to prayer. You might be waiting for a promise to be fulfilled. You might be waiting on the results of or an outcome or something to happen. You might be wondering why God's not brought that breakthrough yet, even though you've been praying for years. And this morning, you might just be fed up waiting. But I want to remind you that we can rejoice because God's timing is perfect and he's worth the wait. I want to tell you three things about waiting today that this passage reminds us of. The first one is this, that you can trust God's timing. It says, when the right time came. God knew the right time for Jesus to come. As I said, some passages say in the fullness of time. And for a long time, it's been, it's been discussed. Philosophers, you know, scholars have looked into why that was the right time for Jesus to come. And some have said that basically because it was, the world was at this time under Roman rule, and it was a time called Pax Romana, which is the time of peace that was in place. It was a time of the Romans where they built their roads, and so it meant that when the gospel, when the Holy Spirit fell, that the gospel could be easily advanced to other parts of the world. Some have argued that the time was right because of a common language uh, called uh, a common Greek language that people could speak at that time. The world was more connected. It was a time when the, the Jews had been longing for their Messiah and they'd grown tired of trying to live by the law. All of these things that according to history could be reasons why Jesus came at that time. And these could be argued, apologists have argued these down through the centuries, but overriding all these potential reasons it was just simply the right time for God. It was the right time. And we can trust that today. You know, this morning, I want to remind us that we can trust God's timing. You know, I was hoping, if I'm honest, today, in the last Sunday that I'm here, that we're here before Christmas, I was hoping that I was going to be able to tell you today that we owned the building. That, in, that, that this was my, what I thought with the time scales of where things were at, that... Uh, Basically, what happened was in June, and I don't tell you all this all the time. I, know there's, I want you to know there's lots of stuff goes on behind the scenes with, with the building side of things. And, uh, you know, I don't give you all the details of what's happening because, well, there's just a lot of stuff. And sometimes it's been, a, the last few months has been quite a frustrating few months for a number of reasons. But this morning, I'd hoped that we were able to say that legally, that we, were, we had agreed a contract with the council to own the building. And instead, we are in the current process of agreeing a three-month extension that has 0% to do with our fault, right? And so, but what happened was that uh, we, we submitted our offer in June, and we, were, we had to try and agree something with the council by, uh, by December. And you'll never hear me slag off the council. I think they've been uh, great for us in this process. But, uh, but at times, there, there has been frustrations. And uh, one of the things that's happened in the legal side of things is we've just not been able to really agree that contract just yet. We will, but it's just not happened yet. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I've realized in this process, though, is that the timing of God is important. You know, I'd hoped that this was the case. And, you know, I'd, if I'm honest, I'd hope we'd have a building a couple of years ago. Do you know, that's the kind of way things work. But when I look back, I'm grateful to God we never had a building a couple of years ago. Because going through all of the stuff that we've gone through as a church, it's been, it could have been something that potentially was a challenge around our neck. 
I also trust God's timing because I have a friend who's going through a building project just now in his church, and their, their amount that they, are, that they are paying for the building is now 500,000 pounds more than what it was to begin with because of the cost of building materials and things like that just now. Now, I don't know why I'm not able this morning to say, do you know, I don't know all the ins and outs of that, but do you know what I do? I trust God's timing. And we continue to trust, trust God's timing in this. You know, you might think, well, surely it would have been better to have it now. We'd be able to work it, all that sort of stuff. But I realize today we have to trust God's timing. And all of us here might be in the same boat at different times in our life where, where we would have liked things to have worked out a better way. But we can trust God's timing. There's times in, God's, in, in the Word of God where people have tried to fast forward God's timing. People like Abraham, who, who, you know, where God had promised that he was going to be the father of all nations. And, and then what happens is that he says that they were going to have a child. And so they tried to manufacture that on their own because Sarah hadn't been able to conceive. And what happens is that Ishmael is born and there's all kinds of challenges around all that side of the story. But, but they, they, he, he didn't wait for God's time. He tried to fast forward it. And God eventually, in his time, worked an incredible miracle through them that enabled the birth of Isaac while they were still, while they were way beyond the years of childbearing. And sometimes I've realized in my journey in my life that, that even when things appear beyond the time that's been allocated for it, God can still work a miracle. And this morning, you've just got to trust. That's our job. Our job isn't to try and make God do what he can't do. Our, God, uh, our job is not, uh, not what he can't do. God can do everything. Our, our job is not to try and make God do what we want him to do. Our job is to trust God and his timing. And today, I want us to remember that. You know, if you're a follower of Jesus today and living in step with him, that if it hasn't happened yet, it's not time. But you can trust him. And you know what we realize is that it's for our good that it hasn't happened yet. He opens doors when the timing's right. He brings resources you need when the timing's right. He brings the right people along your path when the timing is right. And sometimes we can misinterpret God's not yet as God's forgotten about me. But that's what trust is. And what this passage reminds us is that at the right time, God activated the plan and Jesus came. The second thing that we can do today when it comes to God's timing, is that we can be grateful for God's timing. So we need to trust God's timing, but we also need to be grateful for that. I want to take that a step further because sometimes we can fall into the trap of resenting God's timing because we think that it's a slight on us or we, we, we're, we're annoyed at what's happened, you know, when things don't go our way, even though you may want to do things different. But, but Ecclesiastes 3 reminds us for everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to harvest. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down, a time to build up. A time to cry and to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. It goes on about building and mending and speaking and being quiet and all these things. But it says this, yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. Because God always makes things beautiful in its time. We don't know why and what, but God is working things behind the scenes often when we do not know. And this morning, you might feel anxiety for the timing and what's taking place, but today, I want to remind you that you can feel grateful for the timing. It says, uh, a few years ago, there was a song that was released called Take Courage, and it, it was released around the time we were trying to sell our house, and there was a line in it that said, he's in the waiting. As in, God is in the middle of a time when we're waiting. And, and for me, that was, a, that was a song that was really powerful at one moment at the very start of that. We then sang it in church. And by the time, you know, three or four months down the line of singing that song, I was fed up of singing that line about God being in the waiting. Because I wanted God no longer to be in the waiting. I wanted to, to be beyond the waiting and for things to have happened. And people used to come up, it was at the time just before we moved up here. As I said, we were trying to sell our house. And people used to come up to me and they would say, John... You can trust him. He's in the waiting. I was like, shut up. I don't want him to be in the waiting. I want my house sold now. But actually, I had to learn. There was a process of going through where I had to trust God's timing. And not just that, but I had to be grateful for God's timing. And you know, gratitude opens doors. I don't believe that we fully unlock the power of gratitude sometimes. 
You know, I think gratitude is like a superpower. You know, you talk about superhero movies, big thing right now, but, but I think the superpower for us is gratitude. I think gratitude is huge. I heard recently of a study that was done in neuroscience a few years back, and it says this, it proved that gratitude and anxiety cannot exist in the brain at the same time. That's powerful. Gratitude and anxiety cannot exist in the brain at the same time. So this morning, if you're waiting, begin to thank him. Because we can trust his timing and we can be grateful for his timing. You know, hindsight has 20-20 vision. You can look back and I guarantee you will see God's timing and why and things that work when we look back in the future. Third reason why you can be grateful this morning is that while you wait, keep on growing. You see, worshiping and waiting is an important combination that we need to have. But God often does his best work in the silence of waiting. I wonder this morning, what is God growing within you today while you're waiting? Don't miss it, because God is growing you within that. I've been challenged recently, I've shared it before, that I've been challenged to wait upon the Lord and wait upon the Lord's voice recently and seek his voice more. And at times, I've, I've, I've been seeking God and, and you know, I, I've always found, I've been waiting for like a wow moment. I believe that God is, is, is there's, there's something that's more. But you know, in the seeking, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot in the middle. And you know, sometimes there's much in the journey of the waiting and seeking as there is in the arriving and finding. And we need to realize the power of that today. That in the middle of a time of waiting, realize what God is doing. Realize what he's working. And you can trust and be grateful for God's timing. There's an amazing story of the miracle of Jesus, where one of the miracles of Jesus, where the, the, the fishermen have been fishing all night and they've caught nothing. And then Jesus says, let down your nets one more time. There's another story in the Bible where there's a guy who's asked to strike an arrow and he strikes it a few times. And, and you know, there's a, there's a challenge if you to read both of those stories, you'll see that there's a challenge because sometimes we can give up before the miracle. But today I want to remind you, don't give up in the middle of a time of wait and realize what God is doing. Keep striking the ground. Keep putting your net down because if the miracle's not happened, it's not in God's timing yet. And as the band come up, we're going to finish off today. I want to remind us that today we head to Christmas. Maybe you've been waiting on a, on a breakthrough. Maybe you've been waiting on something happening. Maybe you're waiting on news or, or, or you're waiting on an answer to prayer. But this morning, this passage reminds us that at the right time, God was sent his son into the world to be born of a virgin, that we could be adopted into his family, that we can have new life in him. And do you know what? He is worth the wait. This morning, you can trust his timing. This morning, you can be grateful for his timing. And this morning, you can grow in the middle. The Bible says that those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will rise up on wings of an eagle. All these things, if we wait upon him. May this Christmas we realize that he is worth the wait. We're going to close in a moment, but I want us to bow our heads just for a minute and think of the things that God has promised that's not yet come to pass. Think on the things that you've been praying for. And the word of, words from the Lord that it's not yet came to be. And once again this morning in your heart, I just encourage you to say, God, I trust your timing. God, I'm grateful for your timing. And God, show me what I need to learn in this middle period of time. In the gap. You know, somebody's about to walk onto tube in London there's that sign I'm sure many of us have seen it that says mind the gap because there's that step that you have to take and this morning maybe you're in that gap area and it's not about minding the gap as such but what's God teaching us in the gap he is in the waiting maybe you've been frustrated like I have been in the past where I've been impatient I want things to happen yesterday. This morning, trust his timing. Be grateful for his timing. And ask him what he's teaching you in the waiting.
Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Praise the Father Praise the Son Praise the Spirit Three in one God of glory Majesty Obviously, really disappointed with having to postpone our Christmas in the community event that's meant to be on tonight in the Garrison Theatre. But the heart behind the event doesn't just have to take place at Christmas. So we've postponed the event until February the 13th. Now it's no longer going to be called Christmas in the community, but we're still going to be telling and celebrating great stories of what God has done and what people have done within the community. We hope you'll join us in the Garrison Theatre on that night. But uh, we'll have more details about the event soon. We'll be having two shorter services on the 26th of December and the 2nd of January. These will be in the Sunbeam Neighbourhood Centre as usual. We have no half hour power on during the holidays but this will resume after a Christmas break. Our kids and youth programmes will be off during the Christmas holidays but Kids Club will return on the 12th of January and we'll be back in Sandy Hill Hall for youth on the 13th. This week we sent out an email with details of a challenge that I have set out for us as a church this year. I am challenging us as we head into 2022 to read through the Bible 
in the year. We sent out an attached reading plan and if you've not got that, you can contact us at admin at newlifeshetland.com and we can send that out to you. But this is a reading plan that I would love us to go through together as a church so that we can get into God's Word this year. I believe that God's Word is alive and active. I believe it still speaks to us. And I believe God can speak to us individually, even as we all read the same chapters. But I also believe God can speak to us as a church. We can read through and discuss at our life groups and we'll be discussing things through at church. And, and, and we can all be on the same page this year and get into God's Word and trust that God will speak to us. So my challenge is set. In 2022, read through the whole of the Bible, follow the plan. There's videos that accompany it that can uh, outline the books of the Bible and give an outline and description as to what we're going to be reading and deal with some of the topics that we're going to be reading throughout that. But set that challenge. Be disciplined. Set some time aside every day and let's get into God's Word this year. If you like any more information on any of the events I said today, please contact us at admin at elishetland.com or on any of our social medias. But that's all for now and have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you for joining us at New Life Online. It's been great to have you with us as we've worshipped together and listened to God's Word together today. We pray that you have an amazing Christmas and a blessed 2022. We're going to be back online next week. We also have an in-person service in Sanveen on the 26th and on the 2nd. And we'd love to have you join with us. But until then, have an amazing week and God bless you.